Hi guys, um, today we will have a quant webinar. We are going to discuss estimation and the errors in estimation. Now, there are a couple of questions. One is from, uh, the, it's an official question, I think from the OG, which people find really hard. And uh, there is another question uh, from one of our, our tests, the um, graphics interpretation test. And uh, people are struggling with that question as well. So then we thought might as well, you know, take it up in the webinar. So we'll discuss a little bit about estimation, about um, the errors and, you know, how we depict it in the graph, etc. Again, it's a little relevant because some of the um, official questions do show, let's say, the actual and the estimate values on the graph. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll discuss how that is done, etc. as well. And then we look at some relevant questions. And then we look at two more questions. So um, let's start. An estimate of an actual data value has an error of P percent if P is equal to, so P is equal to 100 E minus A upon A. Now, don't get worried when you see something like this. It is, you know, try to figure out, try to evaluate what it actually means. Um, E is the estimated value, A is the actual value. So E is the estimate, A is the actual value divided by the actual value in 200. This is the, you know, the absolute value of E minus A. This is the, um, the percentage error. Isn't it exactly the same as we've been talking about? What did we say? We said that the percentage, the error percentage is calculated on the actual value. So I see that my base is A. So estimate minus the actual value upon A is going to give me my error percentage. And when I multiply it by 100, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, like when we said that, okay, if the actual value is 10 and then the estimate is 11. So how will we get? I'll get the percentage as 11 minus 10 upon 10 in 200. So I'm going to get my error percentage as 10% in that case. Why is it that this absolute sign? Because I said that it could vary from 9 to 11, for example. It could even be 9. So then 9 minus 10 upon 10, it's again going to give me a 10% only. The error percentage is 10% only. It could be 10% less or 10% more than the actual value, which means that this is nothing but just what we had been talking about, right? Just what the, uh, just the way in which we calculate the error percentage. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, Emma's estimate for her total income last year had an error of less than 20%. So her estimate for her total income, that had an error of less than 20%. So basically, we're saying that the estimate was lying within the 20% of the actual. Yeah. So what do I do? I know that my estimate, it lies within less than 20%. So the estimate is going to lie. 20% is 4 by 5 and 6 by 5, right? So 4 by 5 of the actual and 6 by 5 of the actual. Or you can use 80 and uh, 120 also doesn't matter. Yeah. So uh, of the her total income. So I would say actual income and estimated income and actual income. Does that make sense? Any issues over here? Yeah, her estimated income lies between 20% less of the actual income to 20% more of the actual income. This is where her estimated income lies, okay? Emma's estimate of her income from tutoring last year also had an error of less than 20%. So her, again, estimate of her income had an error. So her estimated value of tutoring income, yeah, was also the error was less than 20%. Uh, so six by five of the actual value of the tutoring income and four by five of the actual value of the tutoring income. This is the data given to me in till here, yeah. Now, was the Emma was Emma's actual income from tutoring last year almost forty five percent of her actual total income last year? So what we need is the range of her actual incomes, right? Actual income from tutoring and actual income. So I need the range of actual income from tutoring and the actual income. Yeah, that is what my question is. Okay, fine. Let's let's look at what is the data available to me. So my statement one says. 
Emma's estimated income last year from tutoring was 30% of her estimated total income last year. So what I am given is the value of the estimates. I'm not given the value of the actuals. I'm given the value of the estimates. And I have to find the value of the, the range of the actuals. Yeah, which means that I want to convert these to the other equation in which estimates are there so that I can calculate using those estimates and get the range of the actuals. So again, I'm going to say, okay, so actual value of income, I'm just converting this inequality into the, in, in terms of the actual value, right? It'll become what? Five by six of the uh, estimated value of the income. And it will become five by four of the actual value of the uh, estimated value of the income. Does this make sense? Just the same inequality. Of course, you know, five will go over here, four will go over here. So it will become five by four. The actual will be less than five by four of the estimate, which is over here. And this thing becomes that actual will be five more than five by six of the uh, um, this um, estimate. And that is what we have over here, right? The whole thing just becomes this. Now, for this also, I'll do exactly the same thing. Nothing different. I say actual value of the tutoring income. That also is going to become in terms of 5 by 4 of the estimated value of the tutoring income and 5 by 6 of the estimated value of the tutoring income. Are we okay with this? So now this tells me that the actual value of the tutoring income ranges from this to this and the actual value of the income, total income ranges from this to this. Now, what is the data given to me? That the estimated income last year from tutoring, the tutoring income was 30% of our estimated total income last year. So this tells me that if this thing was 30, estimated value of this, then this thing was 100. And I anyway need my data in terms of percentages only, so I don't have to worry about that for the time being. And you know, if this thing is 30, this thing is 100. Of course, it's the same variable, right? So I know that if my, if, if my estimated value of tutoring income is 30, then can I find out what is the maximum possible value, the actual possible value of the tutoring income? But I can, right? The actual value of the tutoring income that is less than 5 by 4 of 30. That is what I have. No worries. This is what? 37.5, right? Yeah, here I'll have 2, I'll have 20. Uh, here I'll have 15, 75 by 2, so 37. So my actual value, the maximum possible this value is 37.5. This is the maximum value of the actual tutoring income, right? Now, what is the minimum value of the actual? And I'll tell you why we're talking about the maximum value of tutoring, but minimum value. Normally, we are going to look at the extreme ranges only. Yeah. So now, wh why are we talking about the minimum value? I'll tell you that also. That's fine. So if, let's say, my actual income, this is going to be greater than what? 5 by 6 of this 100. Yeah. So let me not even calculate it. Because it's not going to give me an exact value. It's a six in the denominator. So fine, I'll see. Right? So let me just stick to five by four uh, into 30 over here also. Okay. So the, the minimum value of this is a little more than this. And the maximum value of this is a little less than the little less. I mean, it could be a 0 0.0001 difference. So I'm just going to take these particular values and do my calculation. Yeah. So why did I take the maximum here and the minimum here? Was Emma's actual income from tutoring last year at most? They want me to find out that what is Emma's tutoring income in proportion to Emma's actual income? What is the maximum value of that? They're saying, is it at most 45% or can it be higher also, right? So what I need to find is that what is the maximum of 80 the, the tutoring income, actual value of tutoring income as a percentage of the actual value of the total income. Yeah. Now, if my maximum value for that, I'll have to maximize this, make it become as high as possible and I'll have to minimize this, right? Make, then this whole thing will become as great as possible, isn't it? What happens in a fraction? When I have an A by B fraction and I want to maximize the value of this, here, I want to find out whether it is 45 or more than 45 is also possible. What do I do? I increase this as much as possible and decrease this as much as possible. And that will increase the value of this as, you know, 
whatever. It will maximize the value of the entire fraction. Numerator is greater and the denominator is smaller. So then over here, that is why I took the maximum possible value, which is 5 by 4 into 30. And the minimum value of this is 5 by 6 into 100. Yeah. All right. Now this 5, 5 gets canceled. What do I get? I get 3 by 2 into 3 by 10. Yeah. This gives me what? This is 9 by 20, which is nothing but 45%. Yeah. So this means that since this numerator has to be slightly less than this and the denominator has to be slightly greater than this, it means that this will always be less than 45%. Yeah, it can, it, it, it is at most 45%. It will always be a little tiny bit less than 45. It will never go beyond 45%. Right. And that is why my this statement alone is sufficient. Yeah. A is the statement one is sufficient alone. Yeah. Okay. Look at two. Emma's estimated total income last year was 40,000. This is absolutely irrelevant. Right. I don't know the tutoring income. What was the tutoring income actually? So, anyway, it's absolutely irrelevant. Yeah. So then, uh, anyway, we're looking for the percentage, right? So answer over here is going to be A. Is that okay? Um, are you being able to understand? Was there any difficulty in understanding? I'm sure that you'll have to try the question out on your own. You'll have to make the equation. You'll have to think about how I manipulate the inequality, etc. of course. And that is when you really get the comfort. But is the logic clear? Is that?